Jesus to this uh, Sunday, April 19th. We're still uh, in this situation where we are apart, but I want to thank God that he, we have the Holy Spirit that binds us together. We are here this morning to praise God and to worship God. We stand under the cross and also stand at the empty tomb. Christ has risen and we are grateful for his redeeming work. God has blessed us in Jesus Christ to show us his love. We come this morning to thank God for life, for those who have uh, survived the, um, the disease. We pray for those who are hurting, some are grieving. So we give God um, our prayers, our concerns. Let us pray. Father, we come this morning with grateful hearts. While we're still apart, we thank you for you bind us with your love. Your Holy Spirit puts us together. We come to thank you, God, for the first responders, for those in the military that have run hospitals and logistics, for those who have done great work in tracking food and stuff, the truck drivers who have brought stuff to grocery stores, bring all the products that are necessary. We pray for them and we pray for those workers in places like Walmart and other places in the hospitals. We pray for all of them, O oh God, that your healing hand and protective hand be upon them. Bless all our people, O oh God, everywhere. Bless our brothers and sisters at home. Some may feel real lonely and some may feel at ease. They want to get, get out. We pray, O oh God, as we begin these uh, phases, phase one, two, and three of opening up the country. We pray, O oh God, that you bless us, and that, Lord, we pray that therapies will be found, discovered, and that, Lord, you will heal our people. We especially pray that you will heal our spirit, you heal our souls, our bodies, that, Lord, we'll be reminded that you're always present with us. Bless us, O oh God. Lord, speak to us. In the name of Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us join together in our opening song. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Had 
had seen the sunset on the day that Jesus died and felt the glow of the sunrise when the tomb was open wide would I have known you could I have seen that you were more than just a man you were Lord and King and now I know you and I can see that you were Lord of all Good morning! Today I'm bringing the children's message to you from the woods in Pennsylvania out here in God's country, God's nature. So today we're going to talk about a story of a man named Thomas. Now Thomas was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus and when Jesus revealed himself to the disciples, Thomas wasn't with them. So Thomas doubted that Jesus was there. So the disciples came to Thomas saying, hey, guess what, Thomas? Jesus is back, Jesus is alive. Thomas said, no, until I can see him with my own eyes and touch him with my own hands, I won't believe it, I can't, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to share God's word because I don't see it. I can't feel it. This is just like now. Unfortunately, we're separated at this time. But the best way we can share God's love is to share the message of God. The best way to show love is to share God's love. So, what I would love for everybody to do is click that subscribe button. Share these messages because sometimes these messages may be the only word of God that some people may have. This may bring people closer to God just by clicking a little button. So let's don our Christian clothes. Let's show our Christian faith. Let's share God's word and not be afraid to post Christian beliefs. So all of you, please pray with me in this wonderful prayer. It says, thank you, Jesus, for loving me and showing me how to love others. God bless, stay safe, and until next week. We come again to thank God for our church family and our friends online and everywhere. We pray that God will bless you all. We talked to some people this week. Uh, most people are okay and we pray that you are all well wherever you are. We are going to light the candles again to uh, remember those who have passed this week due to the disease. We will light three candles. 
to remember the people um, out in Maryland, but everywhere in the United States and around the world who are devastated due to this coronavirus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We lift up those who are still sick, especially in cities and places where there have been horrible devastation. We thank you for the cough seems to be flattening, and we pray that it will flatten completely. We pray that therapies will be found we pray, O oh God, that your people, all people everywhere, peoples of the world, that they'll be healed. We pray as we come close to, uh, in this season of spring and into summer, we pray, O oh God, that uh, life will start back again. We are waiting and looking to the normalcy. Oh Lord, we pray for wisdom and we pray for uh, caution everywhere that uh, the disease will be stopped. We pray, O oh God, that we will uh, give people patience and understanding and consideration of others. Lord, be with us and hear our prayers. We pray for relief. We pray for those especially who are unemployed, who are looking for work and looking for to support their families. Everywhere, especially in the poorest countries. Lord, visit your people in a special way and make ways where there are no ways so that people don't starve, that food be brought to all people. We pray, O oh God, that you intervene in every situation. Bless us this day as we continue to worship. Speak to us your healing. Speak to us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 16, verses 5 through 11. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundaries line, lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a godly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices, my body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy, in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. All right, please join us as we all sing together this hymn, Thine Be the Glory, 308 in the Methodist hymnal.
reading is from the Gospel of John, John chapter 20, verse 19 through 31. John 20, verse 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first week, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Because you are blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, here we are, one more Sunday morning, worshiping together over the internet. Now, a lot of churches are doing the same thing. And in fact, St. Andrew's is actually included in a list of streaming worship services on the United Methodist Church org website look it up but churches are not the only ones using the internet for communications I would venture to say that those of you who are fortunate enough to work remotely during this time are staying in contact with your employers and co-workers using some media like Microsoft Teams or Skype or Zoom or something to have your meetings and to get in contact with one another we're even seeing Broadway shows on our TVs and musical artists are holding concerts using YouTube and other internet media. And since we've had to worship this way, we've averaged about 75 to 80 views of our worship services. Good Friday and Easter were the largest, but only about two to five people sharing the Facebook posts on their own pages. A few weeks ago, a local band I like, Scythian, held a concert from one of the band's living rooms. It was seen by thousands and shared hundreds of times on people's pages. If we can share a Celtic band, why are we so afraid to share God's word in the same way? Or do we just not believe that it's gonna make any difference? That's what I would like to talk to you a little bit about this morning. In our reading in the Psalms, David's on the run for his life, and he's scared. But he holds on to the firm idea that God will be his protector. He knows that God will never leave him or turn from him as long as he is faithful to listen to him and to trust in him with all of his might. If we're steady in our daily scripture readings, we too can bless the Lord who gives me counsel through his word. And as long as we let the Holy Spirit guide us, our hearts can also instruct us in all we do. Why are we so scared that someone might get offended if we share our faith? Today's climate is sometimes too politically correct. Maybe we need people to stand up for what's right no matter whether it bothers some people or not. God will always be with us. He will never let us down or turn away from us. I read a story this past Monday in the upper room that was based on this very psalm. Let me read just a portion of it here for you. It has to do with a mother who was vacationing with her family in Africa. She says, the beautiful colors, faces, and smiles around me became a nightmare as my young son's hand slipped out of mine. I frantically searched for him as fear crept over me, but then my eyes locked onto the back of his bright red shirt a mere 10 feet away. Two friendly Oromo women had waved him over so they could touch his blonde hair and stare into his blue eyes. Quickly covering the distance, I cried, Son, I thought I lost you. Tears edged my voice. Mommy, you always know where I am, he confidently replied. What faith he had in me. Sometimes we move away from God and wonder if God has lost track of us. But God never leaves us or forsakes us. And God always knows where we are. No matter what, we can have faith knowing that God will always find us. And the thought for the day for this day was, when I hold God's hand, I can never get lost. I love that. God sent his son into the world to teach us how to live. Do we have the courage to live out our lives as Jesus did? You know, I seem to recall that not everyone agreed or even liked Jesus. In fact, we just celebrated Holy Week. Jesus was wrongly accused and convicted and hung on a cross for crimes he never committed. What crimes was he guilty of? Speaking the truth and showing his father's love to everyone he met. That was his crime. Well, those, that made the powers that be uncomfortable with his teachings and his sinless life. 
So they had to make up charges to get him out of their way. Now we don't have to worry about suffering as Jesus did. So why are we so afraid to share the love and word of God? Will any of you share this service or others on your own page? Or are you too afraid of what your Facebook friends might say? Well, perhaps it isn't fear. Perhaps we just don't believe that God can use media like Facebook or YouTube to reach those who don't know or understand him. Well, John tells us a story in chapter 20 of when Jesus first appeared to his disciples. They were in the locked room, afraid for their lives. <laughs> There's that fear thing again. Because they had just seen their teacher and Lord Jesus taken away, beaten, and left to die in one of the most painful and tortuous methods known to man. They knew that the religious leaders of the day were looking for them as his followers, and they were scared. Then what happens but their master, who they thought was dead? Obviously, the fear had made them forget his promise to come back after three days. He appears in their midst. Now, I can't, be, I can't blame them for being startled by this. A few years ago, I received a call on my cell phone from my grandmother, who never owned a phone in her life and had been dead for about 10 years. Her name came up on my phone and everything. That unnerved me. So I can imagine how actually seeing a man you just witnessed being crucified standing in a locked room would make you feel. But as soon as Jesus spoke to them and showed them his pierced hands and his side, they believed. Now these are the same disciples who, when Mary came to tell them that she had seen Jesus in the garden after his burial, according to Luke in chapter 24, verses 11 through 12, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now, to much of the world, God's word does seem like nonsense. Love my enemies? If someone slapped me on one cheek, I should turn the other one to them? Help perfect strangers? Wow, what nonsense. None of those things will make me famous or wealthy. It took seeing Jesus' hands and his side for these followers to believe. We have the scriptures and faith, and that's enough for most of us. The Spirit of God lives in each of us, just as it did in those disciples after Jesus breathed on them. And his words to them are the same ones he says to us in Matthew 28, verse 19. He says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Allow, allow me to repeat that last part there. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And he finishes by saying, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Do we believe this is our duty, or does it fall to just ordain ministers like Pastor Chris? And the disciples weren't ordained ministers, they were ordinary people like you and me. Yes, we do have the scriptures to tell us all that occurred 20 or 2,000 plus years ago. These men were living it. We have faith to go on as well as those miracles that have happened in all of our lives and in the world as a whole. Anyone who can look at the majesty of the Rocky Mountains or watch the multicolored fish swimming around on a coral reef and not believe that a benevolent God made all this for us is blinder than Thomas. Thomas, the unbeliever, we call him. Thomas, also called Didymus, or the twin, was one of Jesus' disciples. He was a passionate man who was anything but cowardly. In John 11, verse 16, we see him urging the other disciples to accompany Jesus to Judah, even though he knew it could mean their death. He wasn't shy, either. 
during the Last Supper, he's the one who admitted that he didn't understand where Jesus was going to and asked him to show him the way. He was also a thinker. He refused to believe Jesus was alive again, even though with all of his closest friends telling him of their earlier encounter with the Lord, until he could see the marks on the hands and put his finger in them and into his side. Once Jesus appeared to him, though, and offered his hands inside, Thomas believed. What did Jesus tell him and us? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. That's us, friends. We have never seen Jesus, but we do believe. So if we are so blessed, why are we still so afraid to spread his word and do as he instructed us? to teach others to obey everything he has commanded. We shouldn't keep this great knowledge to ourselves. We need to spread it as widely as we can. Oh, some people scoff and even ridicule us, certainly. But if we can reach just one person with the good news that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, we all may have life in his name. It'll be worth any amount of ridicule or name calling we might have to endure. So let's blow up the internet with this good news of Jesus Christ instead of those political, humorous, or even mean or unchristian like postings that are so prevalent. Share these services on your page. Urge others to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And who knows? You may bring someone to know Jesus as his or her personal savior. These posts may be the only church that some people have ever experienced, and it could give them the spark to want to learn more and to join, if not us, at least some church family somewhere. It's just a simple click. Don't be scared. Go ahead. Right now, click the share button. Time to bring our gifts and offering and tithe. Church, we want to thank you so much, our brothers and sisters. We thank you for your love for St. Andrew's name of this church. You have been generous, you've been kind, and we pray that you continue to support your church in every way possible. Uh, don't forget to uh, write a check or uh, do it automatic, um, automated. We have every uh, different ways of uh, of giving to the church, so please do your best and God bless you. We are praying that God will expand and bless you and prosper you. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your good God. We thank you because you provide for everything that we need. That even in these difficult days, you still provide for us. It's hard. So many people are unemployed. We pray for all those men and women who are looking for work. The Lord will provide for them. The Lord will get their checks from the federal government. But also as the, as the economy opens up, that new opportunities will come their ways for many to get back their jobs and to even succeed. We pray for this nation and we pray for the nations of the world that people, Lord, will get back to uh, a better life where they can support their families. Now, Father, we pray. Bless our brothers and sisters as they bring, as they send, uh, they, as they sign up online to give. Bless them in every way, God. Provide for them, meet their needs and prosper them, extend the tents of their family, extend their businesses, prosper them in every, oh God. We thank you for your faithful. And you say that you have no place, no room in the lives of God's people. So we cancel every evil skin, every evil plan you have of God's people. We defeat you in the name of Jesus. That power that raised Jesus from the dead is the power we claim that the power of resurrection will bless the people, will protect the people, will prosper the people, God's people, God's children, 
our brothers and sisters at St. Andrews and our brothers and sisters everywhere. Those who worship with us online, Lord, we thank you in advance for your blessings. We thank you for good health. We thank you for the healing of our bodies. We thank you for the healing of our spiritual lives. We thank you for our financial healing. And we thank you for all your favor upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The song is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Let us join together and sing. Together in the benediction, let us pray together. And now, may the God of peace, who brought back again from the dead our Lord Jesus, equip us with all we need for him. May he produce in us the power of Jesus Christ. All that is pleasing to him, to him be glory forever and ever. Amen.